So let's start. Uh, my name is Eugene Melnikov, and today we will talk about uh, Vlumix Live Sync. Uh, a little bit about me. I'm an experienced Ruby and Node.js developer at Alteros. Um, I worked a lot with Cloud Foundry, Bluemix, and I have some IoT projects under my belt. Uh, so before we start, I would like to ask you if you ever faced uh, environment-specific issues. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really annoying type of bug, right? And um, Sometimes it's really hard to understand why it happens, uh, especially on production. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's easier to find aliens in, in a space <laughs> than uh, why it happens. Um, let's play a small game. Uh, at the left uh, image, we have development environment, and at the right image, we have production environment. And uh, let's try to find all the differences. Uh, while you're searching, I can say that um, uh, on a Chromium project and uh, in Facebook bug tracker, I did a small investigation and found that uh, usually it takes about three days um, after pushing an issue to assigning this to appropriate team. So in, uh, in the big companies, it takes <laughs> three days to investigate issue and assigned to developer. Um, by the way, <laughs> I asked it in, in Twitter, uh, what is your record of uh, duration to investigate issue in production? <laughs> but unfortunately, nobody, nobody answered. Maybe you can answer now. What is your record? My record is just one day. <laughs> maybe, maybe someone have more. <laughs> Maybe someone's still investigating. <laughs> <laughs> a week. Yeah. Actually, on uh, Chromium, I saw one issue that uh, uh, was assigned to developer after one month. So, you see, so it's uh, really complicated. Really complicated to find uh, all the all to investigate issues on production. So let's check what you have found. Uh, how many did you find? Four? Six? Oh, great. I think, uh, I think you won flash drive <laughs> because you won all of them. Let's check its, uh, its spots on Alien. It's, uh, color of uh, spots. It's uh, missing planet. I think it's the most, most important issue. <laughs> and uh, color of stars. So six. Um, to prove uh, that it's really hard, I would like to tell you my story. It happened uh, in 2010. Uh, we implemented uh, uh, application for uh, it, it was port application. Uh, we implemented this before basketball uh, championship, and so we understand we couldn't just move uh, deadline, so we had to do it really fast. Um, and it was pretty good. We implemented all the features, we just uh, deployed last CSS fixes. Uh, and basketball fans uh, were going to use um, this application uh, on Saturday. It was Friday. Um, we just deployed small CSS fixes and QA engineer checked uh, for regression, for some regression issues. And just in five minutes after deploy, he came to me and said, Eugene, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can sign into our application. <laughs> um, so nightmare, right? I, I downloaded database from production, checked locally, it works. So I cleaned all the cache 
I checked uh, all dependencies. Uh, I checked uh, all changes on, in GitHub, and nothing, nothing helped. It still uh, didn't work uh, on production and worked only locally. <laughs> so at this moment, I started to believe in magic. Um, so I didn't know what to do, and uh, I thought about praying <laughs> or, or changing DNS to my local machine. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, fortunately, I, I continued investigating uh, uh, dependencies and found that, uh, and came to idea to check uh, salt. Uh, that I have in production that I uh, used for creating passwords, and it was it. Um, so fortunately, this story ha has happy ending. Uh, another story happened to me just about a year ago. Um, we, we created an uh, internet shop, and uh, this shop uh, didn't have a landing page, so customer uh, asked us to create some smart landing page. We created it, and um, he uh, scheduled a meeting with investor. He wanted to show this, uh, so we deployed. Uh, so we deployed it. We, we had a really tight deadline because uh, there is a meeting with uh, investor. Uh, I was woken up by my customer early morning <laughs> by phone call. <laughs> and he said that uh, we don't have any buttons that follow to catalog. So <laughs> we need to fix it as app. I understand him because a uh, landing page without any links to catalog <laughs> doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's useless. Uh, so Actually, it was easy to fix, but uh, the problem is that uh, meeting with uh, investor will start, will, will start in five minutes, and deploy process used to get ten minutes. So I wasn't able <laughs> I wasn't able even deploy without any fixes. <laughs> um, so we are we are boss uh, we are boss we are sad about this. And uh, but today we will learn how to avoid such situations, how to stop canceling meetings with uh, investors, and uh, yeah, and deploy your applications and uh, investigate issues uh, really fast, especially if you use Node.js application uh, deployed on Bluemix. But first of all, let's revise how we usually reproduce issue. First thought we have, probably we forgot to redeploy. <laughs> uh, probably automated build failed. Uh, we check environment variables, right? Probably we have different values. Probably we uh, just missed some variables. We check some logs, we, we try to add more logs. And if it doesn't help, we start to check in foreign code. Maybe you have some uh, dependencies uh, with updated versions, probably transition dependencies uh, was uh, updated. Then you try to download uh, production database if it's possible. If it takes a long time, you go to lunch because usually you spend half a day on investigating by this point. And finally, if it didn't help, you SSH to your container and try to reproduce it there. So let's imagine how, in an ideal world, uh, our ideal investigation process should look like. Uh, so it should be production environment, not, not like this, exactly production. It should have uh, same dependencies, you should have uh, same build pack, same environment variables, know any processes on local host, and um, very good debugger, interactive debugger. Uh, by the way, 
who prefer to use um, interactive debugger? And who prefer console log? <laughs> and uh, probably someone combined techniques. I also combine techniques, yeah. Yeah, usually it makes sense to add some console logs. Uh, probably it's easier to find uh, anomaly. <laughs> and after five uh, console logs, it doesn't make sense to proceed. You should go with uh, interactive debugger. So what do we have in Bluemix? In the Bluemix, we have a tool named uh, Eclipse Orion Web IDE. Uh, it allows us to use uh, uh, Google, Google Chrome debugger. It allows us uh, to restart application without redeployment. It, um, it allows us to access web and shell logs without uh, console. So we can do it even on vacation. <laughs> so how does, does it work? Uh, currently, it works only with Web IDE. Um, previously, it used to work with uh, your own IDE because uh, Bluemix had a um, special CLI, BL, for synchronizing source code uh, uh, from your local host to container. But uh, after moving from uh, just hub to toolchain, it was broken. What they say is that they will fix it. Um, so anyways, currently we should use Web IDE. Uh, all changes in Web IDE uploads to your container. And, uh, and, and you have special button to open uh, Google Chrome Inspector. So just add to debugger statement and here you are, you can, you can investigate uh, your issue on production. So how to create toolchain? You should go to uh, Bluemix console, uh, go to services, DevOps, uh, press create toolchain. It has a list of templates, but uh, we need just one tool. So just uh, select custom template uh, enter any name of toolchain and add tool Eclipse Orion Web IDE. Uh, it doesn't have any settings, so just uh, you can just click to icon and you will get to this Web IDE. But uh, it has uh, tools for integration with uh, Git. It has GitHub tool. So I suggest to add this. If you, if you use GitHub, uh, you will get your source code in uh, Orion Web IDE immediately. Uh, there is also a tool for uh, Bluemix hosted repository and other interesting tools. So I recommend you to investigate this. This is uh, Orion Web, Web IDE. You see list of files. You see uh, that you can edit it and some controls on the top. Uh, you can share your toolchain with uh, your Bluemix organization or individual Bluemix users. So um, they can help you to investigate your issues. Uh, as it has uh, interesting features, it, it supports a uh, hot case, it supports drag and drop for uploading files, it uh, can it allows you to work with uh, two files simultaneously. It has uh, very good integration with Git, so you can add even uh, your own Git server. It supports uh, code highlighting uh, through ESLint yes, directives, and uh, it also has uh, turn.js con con config. So um, you shouldn't worry about uh, turn project uh, content because uh, it will suggest you to create uh, this config once you start using Web IDE. Also, you see here a uh, folder, la launch configurations. Uh, this folder contain uh, configurations for deploying application to Bluemix. Uh, 
This is how it looks like a um, uh, wizard. It has just three steps. In three steps, you can deploy your application. Uh, so uh, most of fields are similar to manifest YAML, but uh, if you type some values here, they will over overwrite values uh, you have in manifest. Uh, on second step, you can uh, bind uh, all services you need for your application. And on the last step, um, look at, uh, be careful with um, command and build pack fields. Uh, if you sp specify something, uh, it probably won't work because uh, uh, Bluemix Live Sync work with, um, uh, the only with default SDK Node.js uh, build pack. And if you customize command, it probably also won't work because uh, uh, Bluemix customizes command as well. Um, also, if you, if you need to, to add some uh, additional arguments to your command for starting application, you can do it using uh, spawn child product process. And also be careful with memory because if you use trial count, you may run out of memory uh, because um, uh, in the default build pack, uh, there are some utils that use uh, some additional memory. So Bluemix adds some more memory depending on what you are using now. Um, this is a list of utils. They are installed uh, during the deploy process. So once you should deploy regularly. Um, DevCut Sol is a special util that uh, provides access to other uh, utils uh, for shell and inspector. So nobody can inspect your application <laughs> without your access, unfortunately. Uh, and nobody can uh, access shell without your permission as well. I think it's good. Uh, so to specify a list of uh, utils, you should set uh, environment variable, Bluemix application management enable. Just uh, list them separated with plus sign. And uh, I recommend you to use it, uh, to specify it in manifest YAML because uh, if you have uh, active development process, uh, you might want to be able to restart your application at any time. Uh, also, there are some utils. Um, for example, trace, it's a special util to set lock level, if you use uh, lock4g, for example. Uh, HC for integration with uh, Bluemix Health Center. Uh, and um, proxy util installed by, installed by default because it's required by dev console. It's for creating a SSH channel to your container. If you don't need, if you want to uh, create a SSH channel manually, you should specify no proxy. So about controls. Uh, first button, uh, just enable uh, uh, environment variable, enable uh, shell inspector and redeploy your application. Uh, next button, really useful. So you can restart your application. In, in my case, it took just one second. Uh, so just add a debugger statement or whatever you want. Probably you want to just make some UI changes and restart it immediately, show uh, to your customer. Um, and uh, third button is uh, for opening uh, Dev Console. You will see this page. So you should enter your, either your um, credentials of Bluemix or one-time passcode. It can be generated uh, online. It will work just five minutes. So someone uh, not from Bluemix can also access. Um, after sign-in, you see just four buttons. 
I think uh, OpenShell and OpenDebugger are pretty obvious. Restart also obviously restart application. Suspend allows you to uh, run your Node.js application with uh, BRK inspect um, option. So you can inspect uh, how it starts. So until you um, continue process of starting, it won't start. So you can investigate it as well. And the rest of controls. Uh, first button, play button, is for uh, full redeploy. Uh, because you, you know, sometimes uh, your application can be out of sync with uh, uh, Bluemix Live Sync. And in this case, you should uh, redeploy it. Uh, next button to stop application. Uh, next button to open application if it has any roads. Uh, next button for web logs. And uh, last button is just Bluemix dashboard of your application. Here is how web logs look like. You can see uh, drop down at the top of page, so you can switch between uh, launch configurations. If you have uh, many launch configurations, you can uh, quickly uh, switch between them and check some differences. And here is a uh, web shell, so we can do whatever you want, like, uh, like in your shell, but on vacation, without your looked up. <laughs> um, here is a uh, debugger. You just add a uh, debugger statement and inspect what, what is happening. I also added uh, three slides with uh, features, uh, with last features of um, Google Chrome DevTools. Uh, I think it might be useful for even for those who already use Google Chrome DevTools. Um, it's possible. Who knew that it's possible to do time traveling in DevTools? <laughs> Just one. <laughs> yeah. So you can uh, add a debugger statement. And if you just realize that uh, you did it too late, you add a new breakpoint, restart, press play button, and uh, you will be able to to stop on the previous step. Yeah. Of course, it won't work if you have some random. <laughs> 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 and next uh, nice feature is uh, step over async. It works uh, really nice and consistently with uh, async functions. Uh, previously, it um, uh, it uh, put you to some uh, other functions, but now you go directly to function you click. And you can step into your async function. You can check result by just by clicking variable. Uh, actually, it will be available in next version, in uh, 60 version. Now, currently, it's canary. Uh, if you don't want to use uh, Google Chrome Inspector, you can use uh, other clients. Uh, you see that five products support uh, Node.js uh, debugging protocol. So not expected. It's mainly for pre previous versions before 6.3. Bluemix uh, support uh, all versions of uh, Node.js. For versions before 6.3, uh, it starts uh, not inspect, and for New versions, it starts uh, Google Chrome Inspector. Of course, uh, Google Chrome DevTools, uh, Visual Studio also supports this. So you can run code in uh, Visual Studio and inspect. Uh, JetBrains and uh, uh, JS Library Chrome Remote Interface. Uh, so what about other languages and alternatives? So. Um, this feature supported only in uh, two build packs. In uh, SDK for Node.js, it supports uh, fast restart and debugging. For build pack uh, Liberty for Java, it supports only remote debugging. Um, 
But you can create SSHTML on Bluemix. Uh, all containers now use uh, Diego. So it's possible to create SSHTML to your container and use your favorite uh, tool for remote debugging. For Ruby, it could be uh, Biobug. Uh, if uh, there is another option, uh, I just uh, I didn't know about it, but I had a talk with one Pivotal guy, and he suggested it just today. It's a CF plugin, CF local, so you can run CF local command if you have installed this plugin, and uh, it will create a Docker container. It will run on your machine container the same as your production container. And you will be able to use uh, all services uh, that available uh, internally on Bluemix. It supports uh, not just Bluemix, it supports uh, any Cloud Foundry installation. So it's really cool. And conclusion. I found just two disadvantages, but you know, first disadvantage is just partial disadvantage because they're going to fix it. Um, build bug limitation is also partial uh, disadvantage because you can create uh, SH channel, you can use CF local, and we have only advantages. <laughs> so you can deploy fast, you can uh, uh, debug fast, you have production environment, uh, so it's easy to use. You, you will have fast reaction and you don't have any magic. <laughs> so that's it. I hope, I hope uh, your next uh, debugging session will be fast and productive. Mm. Yeah. So do you have any questions? I have. Is there any chance you could do like a demo? Sorry? Is there any chance you'd be able to do like a live demo? Uh, I can show you okay. yeah. after you it, you after that. Later. Yeah. Okay. Maybe other questions? I have one more flash drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you like to do that you cannot do with the What What I do when? When uh, I cannot use uh, uh, the bugger. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Is it coming? Is the debugger function coming? Uh, I didn't get, get to your question. So the first so. question is that what thing that you cannot do with this uh, thing that you just demo? So you wanted to, uh, to, to see live demo? No, no, no. Is there anything that. Sorry. Is there a function that you cannot do using this tool, you know, so you had to do something else? Um, so actually, uh, it's, a, it's really useful for uh, server side, but it's not uh, so useful for um, uh, UI, because you know, you, uh, you uglify and minify your all your scripts, all your uh, styles, and uh, it takes some time. Of course, now we have uh, Webpack, we have, it's now pretty fast, uh, probably uh, five years ago it took a lot of time, uh, but, but you know, you, you will have to run your uh, separate instance in uh, production-like environment uh, without uh, uglified scripts, or, or you should uh, do regular deploy. Yeah. So it, it won't work for your eye. So that's it.